Hello, Michelangelo. Hi, Sarah. Wow. You are my first, second time offender. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yep, I am. I'm proud of that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Because really, I mean, this podcast, since the last time you were here, yeah. I think it's been one week. Oh my God. It just seems like so much longer because you've pushed out so much content on there. <sighs> it. I don't know how you're doing it has been a week that yeah. I will remember for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm not even fully caught up. I still am halfway through your, your last episode. Wow, yeah. Oh. It's been everything. It's been beautiful. Mm. I've received so many. It's been beautiful on all accounts, right? I've received so many messages of people resonating and saying, yes, like I hear things that I feel in my heart that you're expressing, um, they're really hearing it really for the first time, which is beautiful to hear. I'm getting lots of messages from people who don't agree with me and who are challenging me. And all of it, when I'm in my truth and in my center, is beautiful. It is, it is, yeah. Because it's your truth, Yeah, it's your truth. It yeah. doesn't matter if you get hate or support, right? You're <laughs> speaking your truth. And there's something so empowering about that, right? Mm -hmm. Why live a lie? Oh my God, the idea of living a lie makes, I literally feel nauseous just thinking about that. And yeah. you know, one of the reasons why you were on the podcast in the first place and why you're on the podcast again and why you'll be on again and again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? The future vision is wild. Yeah. But the reason why you're on the podcast in the first place and again is because for me, you are a person who can, I said this the first time you were here, but I'll say it again, is that you hold the place of full curiosity, mm. of being curious about people. Mm. And a standard that as this podcast has taken on a life of its own and really I I'm, I'm, can scarcely keep up with it, um, is you know, uh, anyone can come and be on the podcast is, a, is something that I've realized. Like anyone who believes anything right any belief holds any opinion about anything but there's one caveat the one caveat for any guest who comes on this podcast is that they have to be able to have respectful conversations yeah amen no name calling no insulting intentionally trying to put someone down you know and that is something that i i am experiencing especially in the online arena, is people who are so willing to insult me and name call without curiosity and asking questions. And others are definitely not in that camp. There, are, I have received many messages as well from people in our community who are like, hey, Sarah, like, I don't agree with what you said, but I'm curious about it, or I want to understand better. And, and that, is the, that is what I am realizing is the true purpose of this podcast, mm -hmm. is to be able to have difficult conversations about race, about the government, about what happened in 2020 and the lockdowns and you know, subsequent things that have happened because of it, as long as it can be done with respect. Mm -hmm is really the standard for this podcast and ultimately my life. Yeah. And it's it's great because it's like why why even allow the insults? Like mm -hmm. insults are weird. You know, it's like cuz people say it because they're coming from a place of such passion, right? They're passionate mm -hmm. about what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But like when I listen to like political debates, for example, right? The moment somebody throws out an insult, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, that person just lost. Like, in my yeah. eyes, right? Because they're no longer presenting, you know, facts. They're no longer presenting their opinions, their mm -hmm. ideas. They're just throwing out insults, and it's like, oh, like, you have a lot of growing up to do still. Mm -hmm. Which is okay, because mm -hmm. growing is a great thing. But it's like, I don't know, man. Insults, they're just not the place for... for for something like this. As soon as you throw out an insult to your point, like in a political yeah. debate, in your in your eyes, and I agree with you, I'm in, mm. I'm in the same camp, right? As soon as you throw out an insult, you're not someone who I want to be mm. a leader in my world. Mm. When you insult another person, I, I, I'm, for the most part, you know, no longer interested in you being a leader mm. to me. Mm. That's why it was so difficult for me to... Um, to get on board with Donald Trump because mm -hmm. of how many mm -hmm. insults he's thrown out there. And it's like, ugh. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, obviously I didn't vote for him. But, you right. know, it's like, it's hard, man. It's like, because even him, like, he has, like, a lot of things that I'm like, okay. I'm like, that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. But, like, man, mm -hmm. I'm like, 
kind of embarrassed that he's the president. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because he says these horrible, terrible things sometimes. Yes. And it's like, but that's with everybody, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, hmm, man, it's something to think about. Because I have friends, right, mm-hmm. that have really, really good dialogue. They have very good thoughts and opinions. Mm-hmm. I love listening to them. But then, you know, they throw out insults and, and say things or maybe make comments that are, just aren't needed. And it's like, ah, oh, but you're invalidating yourself, man. Uh, yeah. And it's like, I think the motivation a lot of times when someone mm-hmm. insults someone else, mm-hmm. right? So I've had a lot of experiences in the last 24 hours of being called a white supremacist. Oh, my God. I know. And, you know... What I think that people who are using that language, who are intentionally trying to insult me, mm. right? I, this morning I was called a selfish idiot um, for, for my experience in the world and, and my perception of reality. Mm. And I think what people are doing, or if I speak about that one individual, if I, if I look deeper, if I look past the insult, like what is she trying to accomplish? And I think that that person is so angry at the system. Yeah. And is so, you know, if, we bring, if we're talking about white supremacy and we're talking about racism in, in the nation in particular, you know, that person is so angered and upset by the constructs of an inherently racist system mm. that she's hurtling insults at me in an attempt to discredit what I have to say. Mm. So as opposed to, here's what I have to say that has valid merit, and I'm going to focus on that, and I'm going to ask you questions to try to understand where you're coming from, it becomes uh, an insult competition right which you know i i don't play into you know but but the insults i think become i'm going to insult you and your character and label you because i'm trying to discredit what you're saying as opposed to a healthy debate of i hear what you're saying let me ask questions so i can understand it more and then also here's my valid merit um thinking my valid merited thinking because otherwise what happens to your point is that as soon as you start throwing out insults it can it for me it can be very hard to listen through that noise and listen to what are you actually trying to tell me because i'm sure what you're saying is legitimate Mm. i'm sure that like what you're going to come to might be brilliant and profound. Yes. But how can I, how can I see past the insult that you just spit out? Right. Yeah. All I see now is selfish selfish idiot. Yeah. And you know, I try my best. I'm certainly not perfect at it. I try to read past that and see what is this person trying to tell me? Hmm. What do they have to say that is valid but it's it's so noisy when the insults come in that then if you're trying to communicate and you're insulting another person you're going to be a way less effective communicator yes yes and what is an insult at its core right Mm -hmm. it is i am trying to hurt you it's an attempt to disempower right right i am actively consciously trying to disempower you Mm. maybe not consciously so that's the difference it's like it's no longer a open right. dialogue it is i'm going to hurt you now yes and that's like oh you just lost me man mm-hmm. like i'm no longer a fan of what you're saying we can't get as far in our dialogue if mm. it's full of insults and especially if we're talking about something like race which mm. i think is so important to talk about you know if we're talking about something like race and people are hurtling insults at each other we're not going to get as far in the dialogue because it's closed as opposed to I had an experience with someone who sent me some private messages and it was beautiful she started the message by saying I want to understand better and I want this conversation to be colored by call in culture Mm. as opposed to call out culture I'm not trying to call you out I'm not trying to expose necessarily the racism in you know your unconscious racism and what you're saying I'm trying to call you and invite you into a conversation. And she and I got to have a very lengthy private conversation where we got really far and saw how many things we were really on the same page with. And so this private conversation that I had, we got to get to some really explore some really beautiful places about where, you know, we're both white people and we really got to explore how do we hold and conduct ourselves in the world and talk about race. As opposed to what I had in the public arena with someone publicly shaming me, calling me a white supremacist, saying that I've never, ex- I can- it's impossible for me to experience racism as a white person, mm. and calling me a selfish idiot, that conversation didn't get to go very far. No. It ended there, pretty of much. Of course. Of course. Mm-hmm. 
and and how it, it's just you must have gotten so much out of that good healthy conversation mm-hmm. right so many different perspectives that you could tap into yes. and that's the brilliancy of it that is the point of well i mean when i listen to your podcast that's what i think the point of the podcast is mm-hmm. it's to expand your mind into thinking other ways mm-hmm. right mm. Yeah, I had a conversation with this girl a while ago uh, on Facebook, right? Because that's where like we have all the oh political my, conversations. I know we're learning so yeah. much. But, but for I, those of you who don't know, like Michelangelo and I and a couple of our friends, we keep having these conversations online and then talking it through with each other to like learn and grow together. So yeah. it's been a wild week. So yeah, you had this experience on Facebook. Yeah, I had an experience on Facebook a while ago. I can't remember what exactly what was said, but it had something to do with police officers. It was like mm. oh. I can't remember, but it, it basically painted police officers in a bad light. I just had an experience like this just recently, but back then it was yeah. like that, right? And I, I put my thought on there. I was like, you know, I don't really think you should call police officers that. That's not very nice. Like, yeah, there are bad cops. <laughs> You're but... so sweet. That's not very nice. <laughs> I mean, how can you say it in a nicer way? It's like, yeah, like there are corrupt cops out there, right? There sure. are, and they need to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. The, the whole um, George Floyd situation was horrible it should mm-hmm. never have happened mm-hmm. i had to watch a man die on video or get murdered yeah. on video and it was like oh my god and, and that officer should have been dealt with you know yeah um of course of course nobody's saying that he he, he should still be on the job no right. one is saying that um but you're you're saying that all officers are are these people these monsters right and it's just not true <laughs> i'll keep talking <laughs> So I had to walk away because Huck was running around. I'll keep going. Anyway, so I, so anyway, I had a really really nice conversation with this this girl who is a um, an activist, and she was talking. Um, she basically said to me on Facebook in the comments, like, "Hey, would you be open to having a dialogue with me about what's going on and and how we see differently and i was like yeah of course i would Mm -hmm. and we did we had an incredible conversation Mm -hmm. on there where we all put our thoughts and opinions on and she was great right Mm -hmm. so just recently after after um what happened in um the capital Mm -hmm. um i reached out to that same girl i was like hey i don't Mm -hmm. know if you remember me but we had a really nice conversation a while ago i was like can you share your thoughts because I really want to pick your brain. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. She's like, absolutely. I'll give you my initial thoughts now. Mm-hmm. Give me some time. She basically, what what I usually say is give me some time to meditate. She basically mm. asked me for that yeah. in different words. And she's like, and then I'll give you um, a, a different thought. And then she mm. even asked me after she gave me her initial thought, like, what are your thoughts? Mm. And, you know, it's like, it's that type of person. She and I might not be on the same page we might mm-hmm. not have the same thoughts but mm-hmm. damn is she so cool because she's willing to listen and mm-hmm. have a conversation without insults yeah it's like that's all we need yes yeah yes and especially i think you know what you're describing and what i'm describing is that if if we if we can somehow inspire anyone someone mm-hmm. to stop insulting Mm -hmm. other people, they're going to find that there's so much common ground and that what they want Mm -hmm. is to have these kinds of open dialogues. Mm. But it it can really only be done with love. Yes, yes, I agree. There's also, you know, something that's come up for me this week is fear Mm. around speaking what I perceive to be my reality Mm. because I'm afraid of how people are going to react to me. Mm. And that is not an invalid fear, right? Mm. But I I think, you know, if we sort of bring it back, if you would be willing to share too about the experience that you had this week around ACAB, all cops are bastards, right? And how, you know, you just had this beautiful example of how a beautiful dialogue can flourish, Mm. right? Of people who are willing to listen, Mm. right? Because as long as we're willing to listen, we can always find common ground. Right. But if we're not willing to listen, oh, then sometimes I think we wind up saying things that we might not mean. Yeah, yeah. And okay, so let's, let me tell a story yes. then, right? Because that kind of circles back. So yeah, this week, um, 
I was on Facebook, right? We were all yeah. average. Where it all goes the down. The wild, the wild, the west. It's where the we, western saloon of yes, our times. Where our balls are ten times bigger yeah. behind that keyboard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this um, uh, uh, this girl um, who I, I always considered a friend of mine, and, and mm-hmm. at one point I, I was like, I would have considered her a very good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. You know, we went through this um, course together in high school where we like talked to each other and it was like very beautiful mm-hmm. and it was just like welcoming, warming. I even think I drove her home one time. Like it was yeah. just like a nice, really nice friendship. Sure. Well, she said something on Facebook. She said, all cops are bastards. No one can tell me otherwise, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, she, you know, this was, she posted a little article about it and talked about it. Cool. Now, you can post your article. You can, you know, say how you feel, right? And that's cool, man. Like, I would just, like, scroll by or whatever. Or, mm-hmm. or maybe even try to read it and get something out of it and, mm-hmm. and try to hear out your point. But like we talked about earlier, there was an insult in there and it kind of put up this wall and I yeah. was like, well, this needs to be addressed, I think. It's, and it, it hit close to home. Oh yeah, it hit close to home. And the reason it hit close to home is I um, work closely with the police department. I'm yeah. gonna say that. Yeah, well, and, fire department. Well, I work closely with the police department too because of oh, what right. I do. Uh, I'm, I'm a 911 dispatcher and um, and I also have family members and, of course, close friends that are police officers. Yeah. Now, you have Me to understand, too. like, yeah. And these police officers um, th- that are my family, they are just the best people. They mm-hmm. are so incredible. They have, mm-hmm. um, you know, one of them has, like, two little girls, and he does his best to raise them. And they're just, like, you know, the light of his life. He's mm-hmm. so caring about his family. And they strive to make their community a better place, right? Mm-hmm. So a now, real person. A real With a person. real complex, mm-hmm. full life. Mm-hmm. A person who has love in their heart for right. their family. Yeah. Who mm-hmm. just so happens to be a police officer. Yes. That's, you know, what he is. And That's his job, how right. he makes money to feed his family. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so when I heard, when I read that, right, I was like, God, this is terrible because I'm only thinking about my, my family members. Right? Yeah, and she's saying all cops all are bastards. All cops are bastards. So I said, I gave her a little comment. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, um, you know, I have family members that are police officers. And, um, I mean, don't you think it might be a bit more reasonable to say mm-hmm. um, all corrupt police officers are bastards? Yeah. Like, even that would be so much, you know, I can get behind that, right? right. Because Listen, man, I hate corrupt cops. They right. gotta get kicked out. Sure. They're painting a bad picture for my family and mm-hmm. for the good cops, right? I said, wouldn't it be more reasonable to say that um, corrupt officers mm-hmm. are bastards? You're at, you are inviting her mm. to open the door mm. of possibility, right? To humanity. Let's meet halfway. I think mm-hmm. was basically what I was asking mm-hmm. for. Let's meet halfway here mm-hmm. and, and talk. Um, well, <sighs> it didn't. It, it did not change her her initial, you know, thought. It, it, she stood behind that all police officers, all cops, what she said, are bastards. So I, I basically um, kept messaging her, and we got down to a point where I said, okay, I said, are you telling me, I, I just want some clarity here. Are you saying that my family, mm-hmm. the, the officers that are trying their best to be the best, help your community, do everything in their power to be good people, are you telling me that they are bastards because they're police officers. And she says, yeah, I stand by my statement. And I was like, okay. yeah." And, and I, I stopped there pretty much. Like yeah. I, I told her I, I understand. And then she said something even afterwards, like if they want to change their job, like it would be fine. And I'm like, I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want, I no longer wanted to continue the conversation. Because yeah. it wasn't one that it's like, I want to have. Mm-mm. Because you're not, our job is not to change someone else's mind, no. right? But what you know that insult of bastards right mm-hmm. so it's like it's you're making me think of this like it's not even necessarily that when we're throwing insults at each other mm-hmm. that the conversation gets closed it's when we're throwing insults at systems when mm-hmm. we're throwing in, you know as long as we're insulting the system or we're insulting you know an entire group of people yeah. it closes the conversation and you know what when i listened to you and Allie on the podcast mm-hmm. you guys were talking about how um 
we refer to the government, right? Mm. Oh, it's the government that's doing this, right? Yeah. And now when I heard that podcast, I'm like, oh my God, uh-huh. I have to change the way I talk about it because yes. Allie's sister yep. is in the government. And, and Allie's sister is the hard, most heart of gold person that right. I know in the world right. who truly is a do-gooder. Right. And right. it's like, I'm sure I know people in the government. Actually, I do know people right. in the government. And right. they're great people. Right. How could I be saying now the government? Now that means them. Yes. And that's not fair. Yes. It's not. So now I'm going to make a conscious you know, decision. Yes. I'm going to start using different wording to... Uh, I'm going to say maybe higher power is at play. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not going to say the government's doing this. Right, you know? right. So, though the powers that be are doing Right, the illicit forces, the sh- like the shadow forces, right? But mm. I had the exact same epiphany when I was on the podcast with Allie mm. that, yeah, I need to change my language. I need to update my language because, like she said, when you say that the government is corrupt, you're talking about people like my sister. Mm. And that's not fair because mm. I know Allie's sister, mm. right? And, yeah, as long as we paint, it's to be so conscious around our language because when we paint a picture like that and we throw an insult like that, it's especially, it's it's not what we're trying to say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to become so aware of that. But that's why, Sarah, I love and I'm willing to talk to you hmm, because even though you, you and I yeah. don't see the eye to eye on, on a lot of things, right. I still know that you're going to accept me no matter what, no matter what my uh, way of thinking is you're going to accept me, right? Yes. And you decided that when Ali said to you, you know, I have sister in government, yeah. you shouldn't say that. You're like, oh my God, I have to change my wording. Right. But when I when, when the girl said, all oh, police officers are bastards, she didn't care. Right. She stood by it. Right. That's the difference between you and her. And that's the difference between, I think, our way of thinking and others' way of thinking. Yeah. Like, stop. Stop being so secluded and narrow-minded. Right. Open yourself up because right. that's the only way we can thrive as a society yes. is to push forward together. Yes. The, the media, here I go again saying the media, right? Yeah, I'm right. Sure we know people, people in media, media, right? The corrupt mainstream media. The corrupt right? Yeah, right. powers that be yes, who control go. the media. Right, right, right. <laughs> they were just like, disclaimer, I'm not talking about everybody. Right. So... They are pushing the narrative that we're mm-hmm. divided, right. and we are not. No, we are not as divided as as they claim that we are. Mm-hmm. We're not. And I learned this. Mm-hmm. So what? What? Maybe we should talk. Can I talk about it? Oh, whatever you want, Michelangelo. It's, so when you see, um, you know, Fox News or CNN, right? You know which one is which, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Even though right. neither of them will ever admit it, right. you know whose side they're on, right? That's just how it goes. It's biased journalism. Right, it's biased journalism. Journalism in quotes, yeah, yeah, right. So when they have people come on, or, or you know, public speakers, politicians that come on, they no longer bring on your average, you know, everyday Joe, somebody right. who sees right down the middle. A someone, centrist. A centrist, a centralist, someone... They no longer see someone that can have some common ground. Right. They don't do that on purpose because yes. there's no views in that. Right. What they do is they bring on the most extremist yes. right wing, yes. the most extremist left wing. Yes. And they do it mm-hmm. so that when, you know, there's, let's just say, a left wing extremist on there, mm-hmm. now all the, the conservatives mm-hmm. are going, oh my God, look how. Effing yes. crazy yes. this guy is. Mm-hmm. I could never be somebody like that. The liberals mm-hmm. are crazy. Mm-hmm. And then they bring on the mm-hmm. right wing conservatives. And then a mm-hmm. conservative. Mm-hmm. And the um the liberals are going, look at this crazy conservative Trump supporter. Yeah. Don't take away my guns type of guy. They're crazy. I will never, ever, ever side with them. They do it on purpose because not only do they make more money with mm-hmm. the crazy amount of views that they from get. From the drama. From the drama. Mm-hmm. That's probably the main reason, mm-hmm. honestly. But, but there's another reason. that there yep. are the higher powers at B that are doing it on purpose to divide us. Yes. To divide us. Yes. But the best advice, well, some of the best advice I ever got mm. was talk to your neighbor mm. because you're going to come to find mm-hmm. that they are not so different than you. Mm-mm. They're not so different than you. Mm-mm. Never. Mm. Isn't it sad? Yeah. It's, you know, and... What you're making me think of is there was an incident, I cannot recall what it was about, 
Oh, and I wish I could for the life of me. I'm just going to say it was about masks, just to mm. use, you know, a, a hot topic mm. trigger mm. issue, right? That's very divisive. So I remember seeing <sighs> on a major news network, they brought on, so it was a, it was a, it was a more liberal minded news network, probably CNN. I can't recall which, so I don't want to say anything, mm. right? But it was a more liberal minded news network and they had someone they showed a clip or a video from this guy who was talking about let's say masks right and he was very extreme now this guy was a religious zealot mm. and he was like the holy spirit was talking through him but like not in the good way right and he the things that he was saying were really, really not based in reality. And it was really like this, this man came off as someone who you're like, I don't want that guy walking down the street. Mm. And to me, one of the things that it made me realize, I think it was actually you who pointed this out to me, is you said the mainstream media does this. The powers that be put these sort of very, very, very extreme voices on their news networks mm -hmm. so that they can say, see, look, we had the other side on. Yeah, we had the other side on. We had the other side on. Yeah, they're crazy. They're crazy. And so then for me, you know, and I've, I've said through the podcast that I, I'm, I personally do not at this point see the, you know, I do not fully see the efficacy of masks. Mm. And I have said nothing more than that about masks mm. on this podcast. And I, I am having somebody on um, next weekend. And if I don't get to it before then, I'm, I'm going to be sharing why I have the views that I have about masks. But I know in the public arena, on my um, social media pages, and on this podcast, I have not yet shared publicly my rationality and reasoning for why I don't stand by the efficacy of masks. Mm. But what I have received in my inbox is people shaming me or people in my life saying, I think Sarah's swallowed some, you know, some Kool-Aid, some crazy Kool-Aid and that she's a dangerous person, et cetera. Yeah. Because, you know, you said it, you said it before I even started the podcast. And other of my friends have said it too, like, you're gonna lose people, you're gonna lose friends. And I'm like, yeah, I'm full aware, you know, but I'm following my truth is what I gotta do, right? But, you know, people are assuming that they understand why I'm not in support of masks. Mm. When really, I think I have a, I'm not gonna get into it now. So like, sure, this is yeah. like a teaser, right? Like, See you next week. Yeah, right? Or maybe even tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right? <Sure. laughs> Who knows what's right. gonna come out of me next, right? So like, teaser, just yeah. wait, you will find out why I believe what I believe about masks, I promise, I will share. But people are assuming that because they've seen people like this, you know, news, work, um, news network has had on who talked about masks in, you know, all of his reasoning, they assume that they understand my reasoning. But they don't. And it's they're assuming that because they know other people and what they have to say about masks that I have the same things to say as them. And I don't. Mm -hmm. And I don't. And here's another example. This is just a funny story. And then, and then we'll kind of shift gears. But this is just a really funny story. So I'm, I'm no longer, although I might have re-downloaded. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm no longer on dating apps, right? But I was like playing around for a minute, whatever. And there was this guy that I matched with. And, oh my God, this is such a funny story. Have I told you? you did, I, you okay, did okay. Tell me, you did tell me. So this is such a funny story. So I match with this guy and I think, you know, in my dating profile, it says that I'm a spiritual coach, but like it really alludes to nothing else about my personal brand of spirituality or what I really believe, right? And so I match with this guy and he sends me a message and he says, he, first of all, he calls me a fox, right? Which I'm like, <laughs> you know, okay, I'm sure. You're such a fox. You're such a fox. I'm like, well, that's all right. I'll, I'll wear that for a day. That's fine. So he compliments me and then he says, but I don't think that we're a good match mm -hmm. because your kind of spirituality isn't going to mix well with my brand of godless heathenism. And I just started laughing and I said back to him, what makes you think I am not also a godless heathen? <laughs> You don't know anything about me. In fact, and you know this, you're my friend. Most of the time I'm like, you know, I am a godless heathen, right? I'm like, everything is chaos hurtling towards itself into destruction, right? And, you know, so it was just a really hilarious example for me. And then this guy said back, he said, well, you know, that's what you get when you assume yeah. you miss out on a connection with a fellow godless heathen. And I was <laughs> like, yep, okay, bye, I guess. <laughs>
How awkward. <laughs> how, how awkward, right? It was, I think we're Facebook friends now. Like, so, you cool. know, we patched up a conversation. But, you know, it, it is this, it's the danger of assuming, yeah. right? Sort of like your example with the all cops are bastards example. Yeah. Like, you're assuming that all cops yeah. are heartless bastards. Yeah, you're just painting them out as, like, monsters. Yeah. You don't even know these people. No. You don't even know them. No, and that's, again, like, to these internet fights, mm. right? Where it's like, I would be really surprised. I know the person who called me a selfish idiot mm. online. I would be very surprised if that person would say that to my face. Yes. Okay, yeah, and to, to go even further to that, right? Mm -hmm. What if that girl that said all cops are bastards is home one night and a armed and yeah. dangerous person breaks into her home? Yeah. She's going to call 911. She's going to call the cops. She's going to call the bastards. Yeah. And the bastards are going to show up and they're going to help her. Exactly. And then what is she Even though they call, she called them a bastard. Right. They're going to help her anyway. You know, and then after they, you know, they get the guy and put him in the back of the cruiser, she's going to go, thanks, you bastards. Like, yeah. Right. Like, come on. Right. Right. Or even the ways in which the police are working for us right now. You know, yeah. I live here in Watertown and there was just an experience the other day where... Um, a, um, it might have been FedEx. A FedEx driver was en route with another FedEx driver and he murdered him. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and the cops went and found the murderer mm -hmm. and, and he got put away. Yeah. You know, so, you know, to your example, yes, like a personal experience that this, this person could have with the cops where she needs their help and they're, oh, you got to call the bastards for their help. But even the way that they're working for us where now there's not a murderer on the run and my home is a little bit safer because of that. Mm -hmm. It's your mind. This is a perfect. I didn't know how we were going to get to the segue, but we got there. Mm. So it's this idea. Michelangelo and I have been talking about this for the last couple of days because I think it's really important. So we've been talking about emergency services mm. during a pandemic. Yeah. And let's start by like, yeah, like what have you know, you work in the emergency field. You're a 911 yeah. dispatcher and you work at the fire department, you mm. know, so there have been some changes through 2020. Oh, yeah. People more apprehensive to yeah. let um, emergency services into their home right. re reasonably. But something else, you know, that you and I had a conversation about this week that I'd like to open back up again on this platform. So I had a conversation on the internet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there was a, a, a woman who I was speaking with online who basically said that if anyone doesn't wear a mask, and they contract COVID, mm. and they have to go to the hospital, they should be denied services. Oh. Wow. Heavy. That is heavy. Yeah. So I asked her the question, what if someone was obese? Mm. And, they, you know, because her view at that, you know, what she was expressing to me was that if someone, you know, doesn't believe in masks, they don't, you know, follow social distancing protocols and they come down with COVID, she said it's all their fault and they deserve to be sick and then they don't deserve emergency services. They don't deserve access to the ER mm. or their resources. And I really understood where this woman was coming from mm -hmm. because she works in an ER and right. she has an amazing perspective, you know, and I, I really value what it is that she has to say in her real life experience. I'm really getting a lot out of having conversations with the people in my life who do work in emergency rooms and are seeing the impacts of the coronavirus in real time. I think that's an invaluable perspective. And one of the things that she's experiencing is a limit of resources. So they're having to make difficult, difficult decisions about who do they save and who do they not. They don't have enough beds for people. Like They don't have enough resources to help the number of people who are coming in to combat the virus. But what she's doing is she's then, and I understand where she's coming from, but what she's doing by her own accord is she's blaming the idiots, right? Lots of insulting language there. She's blaming the idiots who are not following social distancing or mask protocols mm -hmm. for the lack of beds that she is having a very hard time with in the emergency room, not having enough beds for sick people. I would start to wonder, is the question maybe better suited at the powers that be mm. because there's always enough money. Mm. You don't have enough resources for beds. Mm. Why? Well, I, mean, I mean, that would be my first question is why are we ill-equipped for this? Exactly. 
Mm. Why are we ill-equipped for this? So she's she's placing her anger toward the people. I'm not saying that it's misplaced. Mm. I just don't think that it's the whole place. So I do see her point, though. Yes. She's basically saying it's like if, in her mind, yes. if these people were to have masked up mm-hmm. and um, practiced social dis- distancing, mm-hmm. then there would be less people in these doors. Exactly. Mm. Which is completely valid, mm-hmm. and I I completely validate her experience. Mm. But, but I think there's more. Well, sure, because, but that doesn't mean that you get to deny those people services. And to your point, when I shared this with you, and I said, this is what this person who works in emergency services, like you, is saying mm-hmm. that if you contract the virus, and you did not wear a mask, and you did not socially distance... That's on you. You need to, you know, you can't eat your, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You should be denied emergency services. And who Mm. are we Mm. to decide? Yeah. That for me is a very, very, very dangerous and slippery slope into medical fascism. Because who are we to decide who is worthy of medical services? Especially emergency medical services. We are not God. We're not God. We're not God. If, if, well, maybe. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if, I know what you're saying. If there were a serial killer mm-hmm. that was dying and mm-hmm. brought to the hospital, the doctor would still have to operate. Yes. Right? And for me, they don't... Okay, so if we want to usher in a new chapter of society in mm-hmm. which you have to meet these requirements, you have to follow these specific rules in order to have access to emergency medical services, that is not a society that I want to be a part of. Mm-hmm. But sure. Mm. But that's what scares me about thinking like that is that it starts to set a precedent you know so to her point and then and then my response to her well what you know so she's saying you brought it upon yourself so you are not deserving of emergency care yeah. and again it's like who are you to decide who's deserving of emergency care or not and she said because you brought it upon yourself hmm. so i said what about someone who's obese who's eating fast food and processed food all their life and now they're having a massive cardiac event would you deny that per I asked her, would you deny, like if she's God in this scenario and she's the head of the hospital and she's doling out who's worthy and who isn't? I'm like trying to crack into this mind. I'm like, okay, so then who is worthy and who isn't in your mind? And she said that if an obese person had a massive car- cardiac event, she would treat them because they're not hurting anybody else. Okay, well, then I said, well, what about a drunk driver? Mm -hmm. A drunk driver gets into a horrific car accident. They've hurt somebody else in the process, uh, but they also have, you know, suffered injury, right? right? I feel like there's been, like, Grey's Anatomy episodes about this, right? Where it's like they have to, like, save the guy who did the horrific thing. And I'm not saying that it would be, yeah, I'm not saying it would be easy, right? But that's, oh, my gosh. It's like, so you have to, so then you have to operate on the drunk driver who just killed a little girl, yeah. right? And maybe you don't want to, but that's your job as an emergency service provider, right? As far as a society that we have built built upon the ideals of liberty and freedom, that's one of the things that comes with it, is having to operate on people who maybe we don't think that they've done very moral things. I don't think drunk driving is a moral thing to do, Mm -hmm. but I do believe that it's the duty of the emergency medical services to still offer that person care. And she said, because her point around coronavirus was that they're hurting other people. And I said, well, what about a drunk driver? Would you operate on him? And she said, yes because he was inebriated and not of sound mind. <laughs> so, yes, maybe he harmed, the, harmed this other person, but he was not of so- sound mind because of his drinking addiction, so she would still operate on him for that. Hmm. And she said that the reason why she wouldn't want to give care to someone who contracted coronavirus by their own idiocy in her language, right, by not following the, you know, mask mandates and, you know, social distancing, or also she did bring up not getting the vaccine. Mm. Scary precedence there. Um, And she said because, yeah, the virus can infect other people. Right, right. So, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, right? I'm getting the vaccine. Yeah. And, you know, I wear my mask out in public. I, mm-hmm. I, I do what I'm supposed to do or, or follow the rules, right? Sure. But, my God, I could never, ever not render aid to somebody that needed it. Right. I mean, that's just insane. I don't care. I don't care. You no. know, there, there's somebody that needs your assistance. And, and not only that, but, I mean, this woman signed up to be yes. a nurse. Yes. She signed up to 
take care of these people. Yes. She knew the implications, yes. right? You know, there's going to be people that walk through those doors that um, have made uh, dumb decisions. Mm -hmm. or, but, but that doesn't mean you can't render that person aid because you don't agree with them. You have to. like. Th but this is what you signed up for. Yes. You know what I mean? Your job, your job in the emergency services mm -hmm. is not to judge mm -hmm. who's worthy mm -hmm. of emergency services. Mm. Your job is to offer them. Mm. And maybe, sure, moving forward, some laws would get enacted around, okay, if someone does this or doesn't get the vaccine, then they don't. Like, yeah. okay, I don't want to be a part of that. But, you know, it's, you, it's your point. When you sign up for emergency services, you are not signing up to dole out who is deserving of those services. Right. And you, you signed up to really put your, you know, not your morality on hold, but in the moment, yes. Mm. You know, this has actually been, now that I think about it, kind of like a long-standing argument, not just with masks, but before, yes. it was whether or not um, ambulances should carry Narcan. And Ooh. Yeah. And, and actually, this argument, believe it or not, it's weird to say, but like it's it goes between the first responders. Like mm. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of first responders, I know a lot of EMTs, firefighters, whatever, police officers. That um, it's kind of split down the middle mm -hmm. how, how they feel about it, right? Because there are people that actually say, um, you know, I don't think we should carry Narcan because what is Narcan? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Narcan I just don't know. is um, the uh, it's basically a reverse of an overdose. Okay. So they I can administer, um, I think it's called Noxalone. I think that's like the appropriate term, but Narcan is like um, uh, if what an EpiPen is for epinephrine. Mm, mm -hmm. um, so, oh, okay. Right? Yep. So got Narcan it. could be administered a couple of different ways. And um, if someone is overdosing, if someone's overdosing, it will immediately reverse the effects mm -hmm. of the overdose and save the person's life. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, there, there's an argument where it's like, oh my God, like this one person. Um, keeps overdosing yeah. because he knows that we have Narcan and that he's going to be saved. Right. So the argument mm -hmm. is we should stop administering um, Narcan to these people because we, our tax dollars, are going to them and supporting their habit because they yeah. know that they're going to get um, brought back to life. Yeah. That's one side of the argument. The other yeah. side is we do not play God. No. We have to save this person's life. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times they overdose. Maybe this will be the time that they right. get their life together. He is sick just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it, it's kind of weird. Like yeah. the argument does go back. But, but it's like at the end of the day, honestly, I think that people really do know what the answer is. And mm -hmm. it's that you got to save the life. Yeah. You have to save their life. I understand they made a decision that you don't like. Your tax dollars are, are, are paying for his, you know, addiction. Right. Or, or you wear a mask and this person didn't and now they've got COVID. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know what you have to do. You have to save this person. If you're watch, if you're, so it's okay to talk about these things in theory. Mm -hmm. But if someone is dying in front of you. Right. What are you going to do? Exactly. And I don't want to say, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not insulting, right? Anyone who we've spoken about who has shared these views, right? But in, if anyone has seen Breaking Bad, oh, yeah. there is a scene in which the main character, yeah. who you could really only describe as a psychopath, yeah. right? Oh my God. Truly, watches a woman die mm -hmm. and could save her, right? She's overdosed. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, right? But like, you know, someone is dying and all he would have to do would be to turn around her side so she wouldn't choke on her own vomit. Right. And she dies and he watches her die. Mm -hmm. Did it on purpose because he knew that he had it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be beneficial for him right. if she were no longer around. Right. I'm going to assume, and this is why I put that disclaimer on, I'm not insulting anyone who we've been talking about. I'm going to assume that everyone you've had conversations with, the woman who I had a conversation with online, mm -hmm. If they were in Walter White's shoes, mm. they would save that person. Of course. They are not psychopathic. I agree. I so agree. we can talk about it in theory, mm -hmm. but when it comes down to it, if someone is hurt in front of you, our instinct is to help them because we are on the shared team of humanity mm -hmm. and we all know that we're better together. We are. We are. 
Yet it's not our place. It's not our place to decide. Mm-mm. No. No, and it, again, you know, for me, it is this scary, scary precedent where it's like, you know, if you start saying things like, if there starts to be vaccine mandates, and if you don't get the vaccine mandate, you can't come play with us. Mm. If you don't get the vaccine mandate, you can't have access to our airlines. Mm. If you don't, if you don't get the mandated vaccine, you can't. Uh, you don't have access to emergency yeah. services, and, and that is a very, very real possibility. Yeah, it's a big forward. topic right 100%. now. Hundred percent. People are talking about it. Like, yep. is this gonna happen? Like, it con- seems like it yeah. to me. So I, I listened to the guy on the radio, and he was like, yeah, what about like concerts? Like, are you yeah. going to have to have this card or right. something that says, hey, The I, invisible tattoo. And you know, he says, he goes, even though, he goes, I would hate that. And, you know, mm-hmm. he's like, I might just do it because I want to go to concerts. Again. I said the same thing. I'm like, the only reason why I would ever get the vaccine is if they said I couldn't go to live music. No, that's actually not true. Yeah. I don't mean that. I would find my own live music. Yeah. That's one of those, like, we talk about this expression, right? What hill are you willing to die on? Sure, sure. Right? So for me, like, I'm not willing to die on the hill of masks. Mm-hmm. So I wear masks out in public for the most part, yeah. right? I'm not willing to die on that hill. But vaccines, for me, mm-hmm. if you're going to come at me with a vaccine, like, you better have me strapped down. Yeah. Because, you know, you're not getting in there. So here's where I stand on that, right? Yeah. Again, I'm getting the vaccine. Right. right? But I, I don't think you should ever, ever prevent people who decided not to go get it from going and doing these things. Yes. You, we are Americans. Yes. We are free. We get to decide what we do, right? Or mm-hmm. that's what, at least what we're being told. That's the that's the greatest sales pitch in the world. So that if we were that's told. if that's what we are, right? Then let mm-hmm. us be that, right? Right. Well, that's why I think that we were sold snake oil mm. because, yeah, we're free, but are we? What? What do you mean snake oil? Snake oil is like, um, it's like uh, an illusion, right? So it's okay. like you, you pay really high price for something mm. and you find out it's just snake oil. Like it's mm. not like, you Yeah, know. security theater. TSA. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, well, so really like about ma- vast mandates is really interesting. So one of our friends went to a protest on Wednesday in mm. Hartford about um, around around the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, um, one of the ways, like, okay, when the flu shot, right, the flu shot, which all the way, hey, guys, by the way, it's 2021 now. Where did the flu go? (laughs) Where did pneumonia go? Oh, okay, everything's coronavirus. Right, 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 right. So anyway, sorry, I had to get a little bit sassy there, right? Mm -hmm. So with the, right, where did the flu go? Where are the flu numbers? Someone show them to me, right? So there has been, if you didn't want to get the, flu shot but you wanted to keep your job you could say religious exemption and I don't have I don't know this entirely well this is my understanding of it so if you have a job and you're supposed to get the flu shot and you say I'm not getting the flu shot I I for reasons of religious exemption and I don't have to explain to you what my religion is I can just say religious exemption and now I don't have to get the flu shot and it is illegal for you to fire me Mm. right so last year this religious exemption was up um, for in legislation and in New York, they lifted religious exemption. So you can no longer say religious exemption, I'm not getting the vaccine wow. or the flu shot. Yeah, and it's up again in Connecticut and like the legislators were getting sworn in on Wednesday is why some of our friends were there and that's what they were petitioning, right? That's what they were rallying for and their whole platform, you know, the people who were there of course have many different views but the, you know, there's a Facebook group that I'm in that's called, you know, Connecticut Residents Against Vaccine Mandates. Many of the people in that group are getting the vaccine themselves hmm. but they believe in your right to choose. Oh my God, I am that person. Yes. I, I... I am pro-choice. Exactly. It is your choice. Yes. It is your body, yes. your choice. Yes. And, and you know, that's just my thing, right? Other yes. people, and I understand the argument. The mm-hmm. argument people have is, no, 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 it's not your choice because you're affecting others, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you get sick, you're going to pass it along. So I do understand the argument. It's but a sound argument. It's a sound argument. It is. But the moment that you tell somebody mm-hmm. that they have to do something, mm-hmm. we are no longer free. Right. You can't have both, right? Mm-hmm. You can say you have to have a mandatory vaccine mm-hmm. in order to, 
you know, so, oh my God, there's so much this conversation can take us, Michelangelo, know, right? It's like, I could just talk for oh, hours. Oh my God, and it's not, let's just put it out there right now, it's not black and white. It it's is not, not black and white. People got to stop acting like it is. Ugh, That's the divide. It's, it's so black, gray. It's not. It is incredibly gray. And yeah. we got to stop acting like it's not. It yeah. is. These mm. conversations are murky and yep. muddy and difficult. Yes. Don't think for a second it's mm. not. Yeah. That's an illusion. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because there's so much to talk about it that comes with it. Like you're saying, these these are murky, rocky waters. Mm -hmm. Because when we're talking about, you know, religious exemption in relation to vaccines, it brings up so many other things, right? So, so yeah, this Facebook group that's Connecticut Residents Against Vaccine Mandates. Again, people in there are getting vaccines and they're giving it to their kids, but they're saying, I want your right to choose. Mm. So someone who argues the other side, right? This is why I like having conversations it's with great. all kinds of people because oh, yeah. I want to know what you think. Just please do it with respect. With love. <laughs> with love. And if want... you don't, I'll listen anywhere to the best of my ability. Mm. But hey, I got triggers too. Oh, yeah. Insults, that's my trigger. Yeah, like white supremacy is really getting me yeah, right now. I can't hear anything stuff. beyond that, you know. Oh my goodness. But I know I keep bringing it up too, so maybe I got to do some healing around mm. that, right? Lord help me. Where is Jesus at? Mm. So, you know, one of the things that people say about vaccines and they say about vaccine mandates who are in support of it say, well, you don't have to get a vaccine, but then... You know, you don't have to get a vaccine, but then you don't get to be a part of the public education system, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, here's what you're not, what I don't think that individual is fully seeing is that, sure, let's say I'm a low income mother. I've got three kids. I work three jobs. My mom helps me raise my kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put that vaccine in my body or my babies. Mm -hmm. But let's say, not too far from now, I don't know, maybe fall 2021. If you want to put your kids in public school, they have to have had the vaccine. Mm -hmm. It's a mandate, mandatory, that your children have had this vaccine. Mm -hmm. This woman is saying, I don't want to put that in my babies. but And then this other person is saying, well, you don't have to give it to them. But you can't bring your kids into school. But you can't bring your kids into public school. Well, what am I supposed yeah. to do? No, that sounds like discrimination to me. Yes. What am I supposed to do? What choice do I really have? Mm -hmm. I don't really have. You're telling me I'm going to homeschool my kids? Mm. Who, who's going to work? Like, yeah. It's actually scary. Mm -hmm. It's scary. And I think it's even scarier because, like, I know that there are people that would support it. I know that, like, mm -hmm. the, especially the people my age, like I talked mm -hmm. about last time, mm -hmm. they would support it. Mm hmm the mandate. And, and, yes, they would. And 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 it's so sad because in, in their minds, right, they're not doing it because they're terrible people. They're right. doing it because they think that it's right. Exactly. Just like how I think it would be wrong. That's right. all. But please hear out why yeah. I think it's wrong. Right. Because I fully, maybe not fully, but mm -hmm. I feel like I pretty well understand the argument mm -hmm. for mandates. Mm -hmm. And it still doesn't resonate with me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So because really, if I'm... When I'm saying that I am against vaccine mandates, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to tell you not to get the vaccine. No, if you want it, go. You do you. Exactly. Boo -boo. Go do it. Yeah. Go do it. You do you. Right. right. Like you want it. Like I'm afraid of what's going in there for you, but like you do you, boo. <laughs> but I'm not here to tell you, you know, because okay, so for me, ooh, let's get real dystopian, right? Like I have. So again, when we come back to the place of like people who are not wearing masks are trying to do what's best for them and their family and people who are wearing masks are trying to do what's best for them and their family. Yeah. Now, for me, vaccines are scary. Mm -hmm. And not just for me, but for how they what they're what for the people who are getting them and not just for them, but ultimately for the safety of us all. And I don't know this for sure, and many people have been posting articles about no, there's not DNA altering things in the vaccine. It's like, well, but that's what a vaccine actually is <laughs> in the first place. Like it actually does alter your chemistry. You know, that's kind of the point. And I'm afraid of what could pretend. I don't know what's in there. I don't fucking trust Pfizer, mm -hmm. right? So I don't trust what they're putting in there. And I'm afraid that who knows, someday the powers that be sound some really weird sound across the nation and it's just the right frequency and tone and it switches something in your brain if you've had the vaccine and now all of a sudden, I don't know, 
you turn into some robot, whatever, right? Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that's something that I'm actually afraid of, mm-hmm. right? Or something that I can see as a potential and a possibility. I'm sure lots of people are rolling their eyes at me right now, right? But, but so for me, if that's something that I'm afraid of, is that people who are getting the vaccines are having DNA altering, altering changes happen, and then a switch could get flipped, and that person could become violent and come after me. Mm-hmm. That's something that I'm afraid of. It's a damn scary thought. It's a very, very scary thought. But I'm still never going to tell you, my beautiful friend who is getting the vaccine right. or anyone else, right. not to do it. So how is that any different from someone who's saying to me, you have to get the vaccine because you're afraid that I'm going to infect other people with a virus. It's the exact same thing, except you're trying to force something on me. I'm not trying to force anything on you. My actions are in my actions and thinking and perception is in alignment with freedom and yours is not. You can you can have the belief that um People who are reckless with themselves and social distancing should not have emergency medical services. You can have the belief that um, all people should get the vaccine. It should be mandated that if they want to be a part of this matrix world, they have to have the vaccine because they could spread it to other people. So they should not be allowed on public transport. You can hold those beliefs. But to me, it's hypocritical to say that you also believe in freedom. Mm, Amen. Thank you. Amen. And I agree with that. Freedom. Freedom. It's Medical your, freedom. It is your choice. Yes. The moment you no longer have choice, right. it is not freedom. Right. And that sets a bad precedent. I think so. Oh my goodness. I think so. And so that's fine. You can hold these beliefs and you can also say that you believe in freedom, but I, I don't think you do. You know what's so fun? What is fun? You're choosing not to get the vaccine and I am because yeah. it's our choice and we're fucking free. Yes, we're free. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why we can still talk to each other because we believe in each other's choice. But imagine you were forced to get it. Could you imagine? No. (laughs) No. Uh, No. Imagine you were forced not. Imagine if I strapped you down and said, don't get it. Yeah. That doesn't feel good, right? Don't tell me what I can and can't do. Don't tell me what I can and can't do. So, you know, if we stay on this topic for a moment longer, some other things that come with it, right? So our friend who went to this rally Hmm. that was on Wednesday, the same day as the rally at Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., there was a rally in Hartford about religious exemption and about the, again, like you're saying, the scary precedent of, Hmm. you know, if we remove our medical freedoms, there's a great quote. Let me see if I can pull it up really quick. Hmm. But... If we remove our medical freedoms, it it sets a very scary precedent, right? And that's why the religious exemption, that's why there are so many people um, who are in support of of keeping the religious exemption as part of the legislation. Mm. Okay, so our friend was at this rally. A lot of people in that rally are Trump supporters. A lot of them aren't. A lot of them were wearing masks. Some, many of them were not. It was a full, but what unified this group was they were standing against the lifting of religious exemption. There was another group, I'm not going to say what group they were, but you could probably assume based on context clues. There was another group that was protesting the group of our friends who assumed, and our friend is one of them, who is not a Trump supporter. This other group a more, let's just say a more liberally minded group was protesting our friends because they assumed that they were there for Trump. And then a lot of nasty things happened. Um, This more liberally minded group came up to our friend who was there with her two small children and yelled at her in her face and said, close your fucking mouth with your diseased mouth. And she said, could you please watch your language in front of my children? And he was like, you know, you're a fucking idiot, blah, 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 blah. There was another example of someone who was part of the ralliers um, for, you know, against lifting the religious exemption, who spit in the face of this other person in the other group. Um, And really what I think it all really boiled down to was a bunch of miscommunication and a bunch of assumption 
a bunch of assumption that somehow the group that our friend was with who was like, hey, we're not for vaccine mandates. We don't want the religious exemption to be lifted because it sets a very scary precedent. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. Some of us support Trump. Some of us don't. We're an eclectic group of people. And this other group was like, y'all, Trump supporters and like, you know, verbal violence and then, uh, you know, physical violence occurred because of it. Because questions weren't asked. Yeah. What are you doing here? Right. Even if it was a Trump rally, like, mm -hmm. what are you doing here? Right. What do you believe? It doesn't happen. No. And it needs to happen. And it's sad. Because if it doesn't happen, there's always going to be violence. Yeah. If we don't try to meet each other where we are, there will always be violence. Yeah. And that's why this is so important, <laughs> doing, doing what you're doing. You know, we got we got to talk to each other. Yeah. We got to stop like acting like we're so different. We're not. Mm -hmm. We have different views, and that's okay. It's exactly what we said last time. It's, exactly, it's all okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Stop acting like it's not. It is. It's fine. Yeah. I get it, man. You want to get the vaccine? Go. Right. You don't. Don't. Right. Like, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're, okay? good. we're still going to be okay. Yeah. We're going to wake up tomorrow and nothing will change. Right. The sun <laughs> is going to rise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, Michelangelo, I feel like this is a nice place for us to sort of come, you know, full circle, round ourselves out for today. Mm. Um, anything that you want to say to round us out? Maybe a little bit about passion, about purpose, you know, la okay, here's... Here's an interesting little thing. Okay. When we met the first time, I said I was going to ask you something. Did you live your life on your own accord? Have you? How have you made progress, right? Mm. How have you made progress in such an endeavor? You know, I think I have made a slight progress. I know you have. You know, because it's like at least what I'm doing is speaking my truth, right? I am speaking my truth. I am not going to hide who I am to fit in with society. Mm. I am me. Yeah. I have, oh my God, I have such a great friend that I had to have a really, mm. really difficult conversation with. And I had to ask that friend like, oh, like if, if I thought mm -hmm. this way, a way that you completely are against, would you no longer be my friend? And that person had to think about it. Mm. That person had to think about it. I know I'm being very vague here. But you, you're getting your point across very well. Yeah, and it was like, wow. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I wouldn't, if I can go back into time, I would still have the conversation. Yeah. Because at least I'm speaking my truth. Yeah. And what I know about you, mm. and this is the reason why you're one of my best friends, mm. right? Because we share this common value, is that with this friend, right, and you asked the question, if I believe something so different from you, and you gave a specific example, right, if mm -hmm. I believe something so different from you, would you still be my friend? And she had to think about it. What I know about you is that if it were to ever come to that and she were to say, no, I can't, let's, because it's on the table for her, mm -hmm. right, in a way. It doesn't seem like it's going to actually go that way, mm -hmm. right? But No, it, no, it actually, right. it, it, it didn't, Yeah, right. it ended up being really, right. really good. Of course. Yeah. But let's say it did, yeah. right, in another scenario. Let's say you did ask this person, hey, like, I believe something that's so different from you, um, would you still be my friend? And they said no. Hmm. What I know about you and what I know about me and the reason why we share common ground and can be such good friends is because if that person says no, as time goes on, Maybe they change their mind mm. and they're ready to be friends again. Yeah. You will meet them with open arms. Oh, of course. Because you are still holding the pillar of friendship. Of course. Of course. Every Everyone's a friend. Yeah. Maybe everyone doesn't have access to all my resources, right? If you can't talk with me, res if you can't talk to me with respect, you can't come sit at my kitchen table. Mm. Right? It's a great, great boundary. Right. But it doesn't mean you're not my friend. No. It's just you're invited to speak with me with respect, mm. and that's how you have access to my kitchen table like you do, my yeah, friend. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, you've made progress in the pursuit of living life on your own terms, speaking your truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, until we do this again. Yeah. All right, round two in the books. Let's do that again. High five. <laughs> Woo! It was a bad first high five. It was not our best. <laughs>